I think most people my age remembers when Five Nights at Freddy's was first released. I think I was a freshman in high school, and I remember it being a talking point in my group of friends. I don't remember where I was when I first played the enormously popular game, but I remember being told how scary it was. But instead, even my dumb high schooler brain wasn't terrified by the lazy jump scares, so I never picked up the game again after that. Little did I know that one simple flash game that was entertaining for maybe 30 minutes would become one of the largest horror properties in the gaming industry. YouTubers literally built their multi-million subscriber channels analyzing these games as if they were elaborate art projects or ARGs that have some deeper meaning to them. Five Nights at Freddy's has a very fascinating entry in the history of gaming. Since its 2014 debut, this series has always nagged at me because of this reason. There is so much opportunity for this idea of a haunted Chuck E. Cheese style building. With the clash of child friendly characters and the threat of body mutilation, the Five Nights at Freddy's or FNAF VHS tapes is a series of YouTube videos created by YouTuber Squimpus McGrimpus. But don't let his name fool you, because we are going to be watching his way of recreating this series to be actually scary. But as always, these are not my videos, and I suggest all of you click off this video and go watch his 12 episode series for yourself. I put a link to the playlist in the description of this video. I like to think that my narration acts kind of like a hand to hold when watching scary content, and this series is definitely meant to be experienced alone, for reasons we'll get to. So this is your last warning to go watch these videos for yourself. But before we jump into this, I just want to remind you to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this kind of content. With that, sit back, relax, and turn off the lights as we take a look at the Five Nights at Freddy's VHS tapes. Welcome to the Fazbear Entertainment's Maintenance Video Manual. This tape will cover the instructions on how to clean out your state of the art animatronic characters. Our first video is titled Fazbear Entertainment Video Manual, and immediately we are shown the fuzzy recording of some presentation from way back in the 1970s or the 1980s. The music is a soft orchestra track, and the narration is being done by what sounds like an early form of text-to-speech. Our narrator tells us that this video is meant to teach us how to do maintenance and clean the animatronic characters as if we were a new employee. At first, our new job seems relatively easy, as the animatronic parts are easy to remove for us to do maintenance work. Press the blue unlock button on the back of the head. Remove the upper jaw carefully, then detach the lower jaw. Third, press down on both shoulders to unlock the shoulder joints. Remove both arms. Finally, take the torso piece and lift it upward until it is completely removed. Climb inside the torso and accept your death. As we can tell, our first VHS tape seems to have been made in poor faith, as after removing the torso, we see a censored pile of gore stuffed into the machinery. Our narrator tells us to get in, which obviously is a death sentence. But in the last couple of frames of the video, we can see this darkened image of the animatronic. Its robot eyes are just the white bulbs, but I was willing to bet that there was something else in this image. And there is. Using the power of Photoshop, a simple adjusting of the brightness of the image revealed just one little detail that is almost impossible to notice. Another set of eyes coming out of the robot, and if comparing it with the normal image, we can probably guess these human eyes would be in the mouth part of the robot. Is this a victim of such a brutal death? And why did whoever produced this video even put this in here? Are we looking at official company manuals? Or maybe that's just a guise for something a lot more disturbing. Let's keep watching. Our second video is called Bonnie Joint Movement Testing. And by the title, I'm assuming that we are going to learn more about how to do maintenance on these robots. Oddly, we don't get any narration in this video. Instead, we are told what body parts to move and how they should look when being tested, until we test the ears, and clearly this Bonnie animatronic is unresponsive.
when we test its jaw, the animatronic just leaves, I guess. And this is where our instructional guide begins to fall apart. After that nightmare fuel, we then cut to a present box and elongated mime creature hovering above it. Music slowly fades in as the weird doll thing just stares at us from above the box. Eventually its eyes begin to glow white like the others in the previous video, and we get to hear this upsetting noise. So you're probably wondering what just flew out of the box at us. Well I slowed it down to a frame by frame speed so we can see it better. Apparently this is another Fazbear animatronic, but not the same one from the first video. This one is more yellow and far older by the looks of it. We now know that these robots are more than just bugged out metal suits that someone is putting bodies into. They are actually moving and acting like they're alive, and clearly they are not friendly to us. Let's try to find out more about what's going on in these tapes. Our third entry is another employee instructional tape, except now we are going to check on the robot's sound response. Whatever that means, I doubt it's going to be good. This tape begins with some text telling us to adjust our left and right speakers, which is normal considering the title. And it also tells us to refer to the booklet which we can assume is something that a new employee would have gotten with these training tapes. Apparently, the way these tests work are by playing a series of notes to get the robot to look in different directions. On the third test, we aren't told what the robot is supposed to do. Instead of the notes from before, our tape begins to play some classical music around the robot during which we get some text overlaid into the video. This music makes me feel better. It makes me think about the birds. I like birds. They are pretty. One time I saw a bird sleeping in the snow. That's what bad dreams are about. I feel like I'm sleeping in the snow, and I can't get up. It's too cold for me to do that. Things don't breathe when they sleep in the snow. I can't breathe. After all that at the end of this video, we can safely say that these tapes are not made just for new employees. Something a lot darker is going on. Since the text is written in yellow, I want to presume that these are the thoughts of the robot, 
and we are given them because its favorite music was played. But why is a robot having thoughts and feelings? Well, the mystery doesn't last long as we get this horrifying picture of a little girl. These robots aren't alive, they're haunted. And it isn't just this specific one. Each video so far has shown us that each robot is being haunted, and we can assume by a kid in each one. After that video, that makes three dead kids right now, which is pretty horrific, and we aren't even halfway through this series yet. At the very end, we are given another split second frame of a mutilated bird laying in the snow, with the words, I can't breathe beside it obviously driving the point home that this little girl is the bird in her dreams. Our fourth video is called Pirate Cove Pre-Show, and it seems that this tape is some kind of company cartoon that was probably a part of the marketing for children. We are introduced to a new animatronic that's a pirate fox. The character tells us to go to the character tells us to go to the Pirate Cove, and then we are shown five small outlines of children. One of them disappears, and the cartoon begins to repeat itself. On our third viewing, the tape has new audio cutting out the Fox character. Viewing of this tape is prohibited. Discard it immediately. It tells us that we are prohibited to watch the tape, and we should destroy it immediately. Then we see the last three children disappear before we are introduced to a new character. Viewing of this tape is prohibited. purple figure with a creepy smile stares at us. It speaks with a corrupted audio track, but using the closed captions, we can see that he actually says, What's the matter, Foxy? I thought you wanted an audience. We are then shown flashing images of the robots and the word go in purple while the creepy guy's laughter can be heard. Then the video cuts to the pirate fox robot as it just stands looking at us. Well, we think it's us until the camera shifts and the fox is actually staring at another bear robot up above. We've clearly been shown that there were five kids that were killed, and each connected to one of the robots. Based on the first video, we can assume that the reason why is because their bodies had been shoved into the machinery as a way to either hide and or kill them. We know there are four main characters to the Fazbear Company show, and a fifth older version of the Fazbear animatronic that is also haunted. The only other two characters we know are involved is the creepy mime doll and the smiley man. But to this point, we still don't know who has committed the murders or why. Our fifth tape is called Non-Existent Video, and it begins with a warning, which is ironic considering we could have used this at the beginning of any other tape. We are told that we are going to watch it anyway because we have to, which is strange. We are then shown the flashing logo of Fred Bear's Family Diner, which is a different restaurant and company than Fazbear Entertainment. And by the looks of the logo, I'm willing to bet that this company is even older than the other. We are quickly shown two animatronics. One is clearly the older looking Fazbear robot, now in its prime, and what looks like the first model of the rabbit robot. 
Then our video cuts to a retro presentation, with a slide explaining a device called a spring lock costume. The slide reads, What is a spring lock costume? A spring lock costume doubles as both an animatronic suit and a wearable costume. This method is much more cost efficient than using separate suits and will help eliminate any visual differences of the suits that may break immersion. The costume can switch between suit mode and costume mode by twisting the hand crank on the back of the torso. The spring locks separate the endoskeleton from the suit itself, allowing the skeleton to be removed so the mascot actor can climb inside with ease. A well-assembled suit has little to no safety risk, but in the case of a faulty costume, you can simply send it back to us for review. So this older company must have been using these cheaper spring lock suits as their entertainment. Our tape then cuts to a close-up of the Fazbear spring lock suit. Four tapes hid inside their empty heads. Freddy ripped apart with a smile, Bonnie dancing in the dark, Chica and her wonderful song, Foxy meets the happy man. You are gifted. You have found the fifth. Let me tell you something you might not know. Before your brother died, something else happened at that place. Something was wrong with the suits. I'm going to tell you a secret. I'm going to tell you a secret. The same thing happened to your father. It killed him, but only for a while. He is still out there. Do you want to find him? Don't worry about times, dates, or locations. You'll know when it happens. for good. I know how you feel, Michael. It's a lot of responsibility. But when this is done, we'll all be free. You'll be free too. It may not seem like it, but I believe your brother will forgive you. I've forgiven you too. You are good, Michael. Despite what you might think, you deserve this happy ending. I've been working all this time to give you that opportunity. I love you, Michael. Our video fades out with the two Springlock suits and some of the recorded audio from the Fred Bear family diner from the beginning. And wow, this has changed pretty much everything I had thought this series was going to be. There is a lot to unpack after this tape, but I'll try to go step by step. 
First, we are taking the role of a character in this story named Michael, who is watching these tapes himself. Clearly, Michael has ties to Fred Bear Family Diner, Fazbear Entertainment, and this new Fazbear Fright. The tapes Michael is watching has been left behind in the empty heads of I assume to be abandoned animatronics. These tapes have been corrupted by lingering spirits of children who have been killed by the happy man. But apparently at some point one of the Springlot suits shown to us had temporarily killed this villain. I guess making him trapped in the Fazbear Fried attraction. And all the spirits of the kids he killed are trapped with him. But who is Michael? I'm guessing that he is the son of this happy purple man and apparently was friends with the kids who have been killed. Our messenger in this video also mentions Michael's brother, who also must have been a victim of whatever killing spree occurred in the past. For whatever reason, Michael escaped all this conflict, but still feels guilty about some event, driving him back to explore all these locations and collect these tapes. But what was this event that Michael must have been responsible for? We don't know, but his murdering father is still alive in the Fazbear Fried attraction, and Michael now has a chance to free the children by literally burning down whatever is left of these companies. But why is the family so closely involved with this series of restaurant chains? What was this event that apparently started this nightmare? We are only halfway through this series, and is doing exactly what I love to see in a YouTube horror project. It is successfully using the concept of analog horror to tell a scary mystery, during which we get answers and new questions in almost every video. And for a one-man team, the production is both impressive and perfectly simple in order to make these tapes as terrifying as possible to watch. Our next video is titled, Night Security Training Video. This tape seems to be another training Welcome video for Fazbear Entertainment Fazbear. instead of the Fredbear Family Diner or the Fazbear Fright. The video takes us through the steps of being a night security guard in the building, which also happens to be the gameplay for the first video game. First, we learn to use the security cameras to keep an eye on the robots, then we learn to operate the doors. And lastly, we are warned about the dangers on the job. The tape's fourth section seems to get interrupted by something like the last tapes, and we get this message. The hidden room in the bathroom hallway, the boards break them. I'm in there. I'm in there, Michael. Your father. I'm your father. I want to talk to you. I only want to see my boy. The next tape is titled Facial Recognition Testing. In this video, an unnamed mechanic seems to be testing one of the newer versions of the rabbit animatronic. So, uh, how this is going to work is I'm going to show him pictures of people. It'll alternate between a picture of an innocent and a person who's committed some kind of crime. When he sees a face, his eyelids should go up a little bit. When it's a criminal, he should uh, play a tone and open his mouth. Uh, hopefully, if this goes well, we can start going into specifics. All right, uh, first picture, innocent. All right, good. Second criminal. Good. Very good. All right, we'll do a few more. Innocent. Criminal. Innocent. Criminal. Innocent. What's this doing here? The hell? Hey, hey, no, 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 no! <laughs> Look, I know we can't have that guy back here, but you can't just put shit in without telling me. I could have died. I... God damn it, you know what? How about you take your facial recognition and shove it? Because I'm not working in this death trap anymore, starting right now. 
after showing the robot a few photos and getting the proper response, the man seems to be surprised by one of the photos but shows it to the robot anyway. When this altercation begins, when this altercation begins, I noticed this during editing, but you can see a face fade in in the top left hand corner. At first, I thought it was just a spooky face, but based on what we see in a few moments, it is a key figure in this story. Our video cuts to a blue screen before we get to see the photo that made the robot react the way it did. So we've been introduced to the smiling man from earlier and Michael's father. We have a face to our series antagonist, so now it's up to Michael to face this monster. Our next video is titled Security Footage, and in it we get a break from the jump scares and instead two of the murder victims have a conversation through the editing in the tape, where we learn more about what has happened to get to this point. So our Michael character has apparently done something to his brother that has caused all these problems to start. And we also learn that our victim's spirits are trapped and they know they are stuck in the restaurant. 
Michael has been avoiding all of the cut. Michael has been avoiding this because of something he has done, but because of these tapes, our character is coming back to right whatever wrong he did. And this video ends after that conversation. The next video is titled Company PSA, and immediately we are shown the first restaurant's logo. So this tape was made back in the 70s for Fred Bear Diner. We get a narrator for the company tape explaining why the PSA was being created. It explains that some event with the Springlock suits has occurred, and the company has created the safer robots that are in the Fazbear Entertainment venue. Instead of moving around, the new robots will be set on their stages. One for the main three, and another for a separate character. Wall posters will be replaced, and the prize area will be restocked. Anyway, the presentation continues and the company wants us to give these responses if customers ask perfectly reasonable questions. Who are these new characters? In a situation where you are asked anything along these lines, here is what you say in reply. Fredbear does not exist. Spring Bonnie does not exist. Nothing happened to anyone. He does not exist. He does not exist. He does not exist. He does not exist. Then it cuts to the Fazbear Springlock suit and we get some more text. Now we are kind of putting together what has happened in our timeline of events. When Fazbear Diner was still running with the two original suits, Michael and his brother were the children of the happy man who must have been either a part owner or some manager. Michael must have accidentally hurt his brother using the Springlock suit that we have seen pop up. Clearly his brother's spirit is not wanting to forgive him. But Michael didn't kill these other kids. So we have this blurred part of our timeline where we still don't know why the happy man killed children. Our next video is titled Animated Cartoon and this tape seems to be another cartoon produced for the Fazbear Company. We see the cartoon characters seem to live normal lives from inside the restaurant. That's a wrap, everybody. How about time? I've been getting tired of these kids treating our fine eatery like a food fight ring. What's so bad about food fights? Oh, I like them. I don't know. Clean it up and find out. Oh, come on. How about everyone quit bickering and I'll make us some pizza instead? I... I could do that. Sounds good to me. If I haven't fallen asleep by the time it's done, then sure. Shut up and do what I pay you for. At one point, the characters notice a table with six seats set for hey, them, uh, but there are only Freddy? four robots, assuming that the other two oh, is for Michael and his brother. When there's only four of us. 
You know, I don't actually have an answer for that. Not even a sarcastic one! Tell me to shut up! Shut up. Ah, the balance has been restored. You think we're missing some members? Meh. Just a strange coincidence is all. Yeah, probably. Well, I best be going now. Then we follow the chicken through the restaurant until the camera zooms in on one of the doors to one of the back rooms, which opens. When the chicken character goes into that room, this happens. We then get more dialogue from the spirit of Michael's brother, which is either connected to the mime puppet thing or the bear springlock suit. The spirit says, To Charlie, you're wrong. You know you are. My brother is a monster. He killed me. He's the reason my head is missing parts. And then everyone pretended like it never happened. Like I don't exist. What makes you think he'd be any different now? Stop saying he'll save us. It isn't true. All you're doing is hurting us more. To Nicole, Lucas, Angie, and Benjamin, I'm sorry. I don't care if you hate me for saying it, but there really is no way out. We're going to be here forever. I've accepted it. Can't you accept it too? Please. I don't want to be alone. Okay, yeah. Things are really bleak right now like going past a level of just dead kids. It seems that Michael's accident that killed his brother did something to his head since his brother says his head is missing parts. But I'm leaning towards a theory that whatever Michael did must have been horsing around with his brother around the spring lock suits so that whatever accident happened, it would have looked like Michael killed his brother on purpose despite him also being a child. Michael has come back to whatever remains of the Fazbear legacy, has found these tapes, and knows he can save the rest, despite his brother's hatred for him. But we have two more tapes to go, and the next one is titled Memories, so maybe we'll finally get some clarity on these events. Memories begins with the music we have heard through the entire series as the title card shows up. We have then given a slideshow of photos from the different restaurants through the series.
Then we get the title card again, but with the distorted version of the happy man from facial recognition testing. Michael has apparently gone back to his father's home and recovered a confession tape his Hello, father made, whoever you are. where we hear him explain his you story. You just found a cassette tape hidden in my bedroom. Isn't that strange? A man like William Afton, someone so simple and plain, hiding a cassette tape. <laughs> Why would he be hiding anything? I'm sure that if you're from around here, you've heard of the somewhat recent happenings with Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Three cases of one and one case of two. All of them adding up to the five missing children of Freddy's. That was me. I'll elaborate on that later. And you know, I wouldn't call myself plain either. I mean, people may think I'm plain when they first meet me. You know, just a father taking care of himself and his kids who tragically lost his youngest in 83 and supposedly just got over it, right? Wrong. I'll never get over it, and the fact that he died isn't the only reason. <laughs> you see, Michael did it. Not a surprise, most people know that, but it wasn't an accident. He keeps saying it was, but he's a liar. He hates me, and he hated Joseph. See, Mike wasn't settled with being the failure and how I loved Joseph just so much more so he tormented him eventually killing him and you know I mean that's why I didn't love him in the first place he was always a terrible kid not worth my time but now I hate him more than I ever have he's done so much to hurt my soul in one day alone Ever since he killed him, I've wanted to put my hands around his neck and just squeeze the life out of his lungs. But of course, if I ever did that, I'd get caught. I couldn't work because I was thinking too much about Mike. I couldn't concentrate on anything. The papers started piling up and it kept fogging up my mind. And I needed a release. Then I had an idea. Maybe. Maybe it didn't necessarily have to be Michael. It could be any other brand as long as I like him. Now, where do all of those children go? Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. <laughs> hey, if they like Michael, they deserve it. I went up there about four times, picked the worst kids of the bunch, took them back, and I gave it to them. I couldn't do much, of course, they'd start squealing, so I made it quick enough to be efficient, but long enough to make it last. It was hell for them, but it was heaven for me. And then I leave, without the slightest bit of guilt. So, there you go. And, now that you've heard this, you should know that I check this spot every day to see if this tape is moved. I've seen it so many times, I'll be able to notice even the slightest difference. I will know. So you better put it back, Michael, as neatly as you can, and start running. And there it is. Everything from the past has been revealed to us right before our finale. Joseph was Michael's younger brother, and both were the son of William Afton, a creator or owner of the original Fred Bear Pizza. Michael had killed his brother either on purpose or inadvertently. Because of this, William Afton snapped and killed five children while Fazbear Pizza was in operation. He knew Michael may return and left tapes as sort of a breadcrumb path so Michael could go back to him and he could take his revenge on the son who killed his favorite child. 
or where is William Afton now? Well, back in non-existent video, we were told that William Afton was still trapped in the Fazbear Fright, the current building. The other five children have reached out to Michael in these tapes, and there's only one thing left he can do to save his friends from the past and stop the monster that was once his father. Which leads us to our final tape, which is simply titled, Finale. It begins with the voice recordings of William Afton on specific dates. Let's take a listen. I'm trapped. The locks went off while I was wearing it. <laughs> Somehow, I thought that thing would protect me. After all, I'm not good with thinking on my feet. Now I'm awake. <laughs> my heart stopped beating. <laughs> and they put the boards back up, so there goes my only way out. Either way, it hurts too much for me to get up. I guess it works the same for me as it did for them. I die and end up as one of these. I just wish I knew about that part earlier. I don't know how long I'm going to be in here. They're still alive. I can hear them moving around outside. Someone must have put them back together. <laughs> I thought this place was closed down and looked dirty and hot. And they probably think I'm still dead. Or they just hate me that much. <laughs> They really are just like him. They deserved it. It shows. I bet they're wondering why they're not up in heaven right now. You know, they got me, so why aren't they dancing up there with all the angels? We're not going anywhere because he doesn't care. God doesn't care about justice or what's right or wrong. God just likes to watch interesting things happen. I would know. I would know. I hope he's treating you better than me, Joseph. Michael, don't leave me here. <laughs> My house. My job. Help me. How could you do that to your own father? I hate you. I've always hated you. I'm going to kill you, and I'm going to make it hurt. I miss the way you used to cry when I screamed at you. It's going to get so much worse. I'm going to get out. And I'm going to find you. And I'll give you a real reason to cry. After November 13th, we see that William has been trapped for nine more years until he records himself again. Just go without me and leave me rotting in a room for God knows how long. Every year, I don't know. I've lost track of time. I can't. I don't. I'm alone. Damn you. God damn all of you. Then we jump another six years to the next recording. I got out. I got out. I got out. I don't know where they took me, but it's somewhere new. So much more room to breathe. There's so many things in here. I remember every single one of them. They have your mask, Michael. The fox. 
Uh, I, I hate looking at it. It makes me feel so alive. Come on, Michael. Come visit me. And I know you'll do it. She'll make you do it. I'll give you the warmest welcome you can imagine. Our tapes have now caught up with Michael as he has finally returned to the building to save his old friends after decades of trying to move on. I see you. The spirits begin to guide Michael as they say, he's close. Keep your match alight. Be ready, Michael. After the final destruction of William, our series begins to conclude with an inverse color pattern. With the white background behind the obituaries of each of the victims, we know the children that had been trapped in William's hell have finally went to heaven just like they had talked about. Then our obituary changes to Michael and Joseph Afton. By the dates given for Michael, we know that he has taken his own life in order to end all of this, freeing himself from the guilt and rejoining his brother in the afterlife. Joseph has forgiven Michael for the accident that has started this entire nightmare, and the obituary perfectly concludes this series that has been nothing but a terror for us to view with this. Together again in forgiveness and peace. I love this series, despite not being a big fan of Five Nights at Freddy's. It's a standard for individuals who want to create their own horror series on YouTube. You can, no matter how much production you have, as long as you stay creative. Honestly, this has been a blast to talk about and watch with all of you, and I'm also glad that I could put all of this into one mega video instead of breaking it up into several. I think it's fairer for you guys since this series is finished. And I probably won't talk about it ever again. The next series I plan on doing a video on is just starting off, but I won't spoil any of the fun right now. So stay tuned for that. As always, thank you for watching to the end of the video. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with our future videos. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel to stay updated with future videos. And if you really enjoyed this video, why don't you tell me in the comments below and share it with a friend who may also like this kind of content. With that, this has been Pagan Valley, and I wish you all a good evening.